Okay, should you order cheap Chinese lights? Uh, we went to eBay and we ordered some lights off of sheds, so you don't have to. We've got another Beam 230 here. Appreciate your sound. Appreciate your sound. Appreciate your sound. All right, so with the light, with the fixture here, pretty basic, simple stuff. Man, the foam on this stuff really falls apart. On off switch, a fuse, power con in, DMX in and out. So good to go there. And then they give you everything you need. Power con, uh, the DMX cable. I would not use these if you're gonna use run these lights for a long amount of time or anywhere outside. And the mounting hardware. You will need a clamp of some sort. Now I have another light that's already opened up and I'm gonna go get it now. And here is the next fixture that we'll be using. We'll be using a combination of both of these fixtures to pull off a light install in a small church. Now, let's see this fixture here. What do we got? We have, we have a Sheds AC90 240. I'm, yeah, I don't know what they're calling this. What are they calling this? Let's look at the pamphlet here. Uh, LED Zoom Par 18x18 18 18 RGB WA UV lighting. Okay, dokey. Cool. Now, let's see here. This is what comes with it. I mentioned that this is the focusing AC90. Um, the standard one that I use actually all the time is substantially lighter. This, this boy's chunky. He's hefty. All right, I've got it uh, powered on for the first time here. Um, and it's super quiet. Listen. Like, this is super quiet. Um, so D001, let's just go through the menu here. I do feel it changing focus every now and then. Okay, so I think this is an auto mode. Ooh, that cyan looks really good. Okay, now we we're, we're focusing, we're flexing a little bit. Let's uh drop back here. So we're hitting my wall. And uh, <laughs> we'll go lights out. Bam! All right, so we're cycling through right now. Let's actually let's hit up a little bit. Okay, this thing wash. I do see focus. Um, so as this as this pushes in and out, I I, I can't see it getting uh, tighter and or you know wider. Uh, but it's always a wash, right? It's never a spot. It's always a wash. Um, so we're hoping that we can use this as a key light um, and then do some fun stuff with the beams. Um, but this is a cool effect that I've never used before. This focus. And I'll see if it's worth anything uh, here in a few days. So uh, let's turn the beam on. All right, so if you click it on there, I didn't show this very well, but we'll actually turn that around. Okay, so these do have a, uh, a different menu. Um, dimmer motor, okay, interesting. So this is a different menu that I've worked with already um, in the past. So um, lamp, lamp on, on, on says I. 
It's not turning on. And now I have an error light. This is not looking good. This is system error, lamp control fail. Great. So I just noticed actually that uh, as it was whipping around, the lamp like came on, stuttered, um, and, it's, and it's not come back on since. Really not sure uh, what's going on here. I'm gonna try a power cycle here. Okay, that's very weird. Why all of a sudden it just decided to click on. I don't, the bulb might have to warm up. I wonder if, cause now it's working. Wait, wait, it just shut off. Let's try to put it. Yeah, that's the relative position. This is not good. Okay, I'm not really sure what to do here. Um, I've got a light that has an error and it's the first one I opened up. So are the rest of them gonna be like that? Um, was it too cold when I turned it on and now I've caused an issue? I I'm kind of at a loss here as to what to do. Look, it just randomly came back on. Now, see, now it just randomly shut off. Like, I didn't do anything. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? Alright, so I just got this one out of the box. You can see the lens is kind of frosty looking. Right, it's not uh, super clean and shiny like this one. Um, I think that's just the temperature change. So I'm gonna let this one kind of like acclimate, I guess. And uh, I'll fire it up and see what happens. Meanwhile, I'm gonna see if uh, I can get DMX control over this thing and play around with the zoom feature. Okay, props to uh, Onyx. Uh, Shed's actually uh, profile should be in this. It looks like anyway, so I'm just going to change this to the address I have here in my file, which is 177. Boop. Enter. Okay. Now let's see if, uh, see what happens here. In theory, if I do this, oh, there we go. Strobe. So we're going to, all right, so this is up. Let's find our zoom. Uh, beam, I'm guessing is where that is. Uh, so if I do... Ah, all right, that's pretty tight. For being that close to the wall, I mean, that's not, that's like six feet. Like, that is pretty tight. That's pretty cool. So I could actually see, like, a row of these chasing like this being pretty sweet. Okay, so, so far, the shed's 18 by uh, 18 uh, zoom fixture. Very cool. Um... I want to see here the color section. That's as tight as it goes. That's as wide as it goes. Um, which I think is going to be pretty cool, actually. So, I'm going to see... Let's see what UV looks like here. Pull this back. And UV. Not bad. Not bad. Kind of cool. After seeing the 18x18 18 18 light, I went inside to do some other business, and I found one of these lights actually already uh, partially disassembled, and it took us a while to figure out how to fully disassemble it. Um, but the reason for being was because the black fans inside are um, coming dis, uh, disassembled. They're coming detached um, during shipping. So the screws are backing out and then they're rattling inside of the fixture or simply they're just being dropped in the fan where the bolts uh, mount that's breaking and separating. So um, here you can see one fully disassembled. Um, it's got uh, three or four parts to it. One plate, basically just a mounting plate where everything bolts to it through standoffs and screws. Um, and then you have the large heat sink with the LEDs and then the motor that actually controls the zoom function there. Um, and then off to the back is your IO. All right, it's been an hour or so and uh, the second beam here, it's not uh, frosty looking. So I'm going to throw this thing on and see what happens. Uh, 
All right, so I'm waiting for this thing to turn on. We are still resetting. It's finding it's zero. This seems to be doing what I told it to. Strobe. On. I mean, this thing's ripping. Alright, so this is working the way it should. Uh, I might have just gotten a bad light, or I might have ruined it. I don't, I don't know yet. So at this point, we are already a couple lights down. Um, we already have lost one beam 230 and possibly two of the 18 by 18s. So what does that mean? Uh, that means buy more than you need. Um, because things happen in shipping and transport, and these are not built to the same quality as some Chauvet and Alation lights and other top name brands are. So definitely buy more than what you need, because the chances are that you're going to get a couple of lights that show up and can't be used are pretty high. One thing to remember, though, is that... Um, since we're putting these into a church, they're not going to be moving around a lot, right? Like, they're not going to be going on and off trucks. Um, so the transportation time on these is going to be substantially less than a touring fixture. Um, so if you're thinking about getting some cheaper lights for your band or a small tour that you're trying to put together... Uh, keep in mind that, um, you know, maybe six shows in, maybe two shows in, you may be losing another light. Um, <laughs> give or take, you know, if a light dies, you can buy them pretty cheap. You know, they're a lot easier to replace um, than a top performing name brand uh, fixture. So that's where we stand. Uh, see you in the next one where we actually install these things and start programming them.